Hey everyone, Mama Seven and Bless here. Um, I hope everyone is doing well on this Tuesday, April 1st, 2014. Um, just wanted to come to you guys with a um, video basically um, about social media, um, about um, a lot of distractions out there, a lot of things that we're paying attention to that is like taking our mind and our spirits and pulling us drawing us in the wrong direction now i know a lot of people have such as myself have instagram facebook even some of you that use twitter i haven't used twitter um in a while um but i do have a twitter um and i just want to say that i've noticed that there's so much information um in front of us like there's so much out there you know um and with everything that's going on in the world we know that bible prophecy is going through like drastically so speedily with everything that's going on in the world around us when we go on instagram when we go on facebook and different things like that even when you turn on your tv there's so much information coming at you that you barely even know where to process it and if you take a moment and focus on one thing then it leads to another thing and another thing and before you know it you're on social media getting your information from there but you haven't spent enough time with God to get any discernment with where to put that information so and I felt like that was happening to me like there's a lot of information that's out there and I believe that God wants me to see a lot um, just so that I don't be blinded but when it takes you away from like spending time with God, reading your Bible like you're supposed to, um, even reading books and different things like that and living your life without all that information. Every time I think about it or every time I get off track in that area, God pulled me back into the garden in the Garden of Eden where um, you had Adam and Eve and the serpent. And the serpent was kind of like trying to direct Eve to that, that, that tree of knowledge, to the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And the problem was she, 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 went, she, she touched a realm that she didn't need to know about, that God had under control, that she needed to focus on the uh, calling at hand. And her calling was to be Adam's helpmate in the garden. And the enemy's desire was to take her off track, meaning to distract her with the best way that he could with that forbidden fruit. Forbidden fruit could be anything. That forbidden fruit could be, um, excuse me, overworking to have things. When his God has blessed you with what you need and he blessed you with what you need to maintain it. So what do you do with that time? With that other time that he's given us, we are supposed to get in our word. We're supposed to read. We're supposed to be built up in the spirit. Because if the devil can keep us distracted, then that leaves an open door for attack. And attack means attack your children, attack your home, attack anything that God has blessed you with. Because the enemy does not want you to have any peace. Even though we know that peace is something that comes from within, because you have to have peace on the inside, even when everything around you is going crazy. And right now we're living in a world where everything around us is going crazy. Um, and, you know, the Bible says that men's hearts will fail them because of the things that's going on um, here on the earth, the things that we're seeing, you know, the, the, the compromise, um, you know, the lies, the, you know, the disrespect, just everything that's going on in the world with our government, with the politics and just everything around us, this matrix, um, if you would have, if would have, you know, if you would say a matrix that we're in because we know that, you know, we're surrounded by lies. And the only way to use your discernment in this area is to spend time with God. So you'll know, like, no, 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 I'm going to stay away from that. God, I'm focused on you. This is what you want me to pay attention to at this moment. I have my children. I have my family. I have everything around me that I need. And right now, God, I need to stay on track. So I have decided, you know, I'm not going to be on social media posting a whole bunch or getting entangled with that. As soon as I feel myself getting too deep into it, I'm going to pull myself away because I realize that I need to be uh, focused. The Bible says be sober, be vigilant because the enemy roams around like a 
roaring, roaring lion seeking who he may devour. And I don't have the exact scripture, but all of you know, you can just put the words in, in Google and it will pop right up for you. Um, and when the Bible says be sober, it just means don't be drunk with all that knowledge. It's not necessarily talking about, you know, wine or liquor and all that. Cause some people just don't even drink. Um, uh, but what it's talking about is be sober, being able to pay attention. Don't be a sleepwalker. Um, we want to wake people up. Yes, but you're still sleepwalking. If you have no relationship with Christ, you're sleeping. Don't sleep on Christ because he has a lot to offer you. When the enemy attacks your body, you're going to have to go to God for that healing. But if you're bent, built up in Christ, you're able to say, no, great is he that is within me than he that is in the world. Um, Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the Lord. So therefore I forbid any sickness or any disease to come against this body. Every disease, germ, and every virus that touches this body dies instantly in the name of Jesus. Uh, every organ, every tissue, every cell in this body functions in a perfection that God created to function. And I forbid any malfunctions in this body in the name of Jesus. Like those are scriptures. Those are confessions. Those are things that you need to know within yourself. And if you're not feeding yourself that word, see, I'm able to spew those words out because I went through a very hard time in my life back when my grandfather passed away I was very close to him I didn't have a relationship with my biological father and it was like he was taken away from me and it hurt me so bad that I ended up going into a deep depression it was like I was spiritually dead and it took so much for me to get myself together spiritually even though somebody might see me they would think I was okay because I was able to put my clothes on brush my teeth wash my face but I felt spiritually dead I felt like I was just dying because because of the grieving and if it wasn't for me building myself up in the word of God I don't think I would be mentally stable right now to even be able to take care of my children depression is real people don't understand that the depression is a spiritual thing I've heard so many people talk about um how a mental illness how much mental illness how many people are suffering from mental illness you can t go on google you can go into the store and find books and magazines on mental illness you find people who are rich um, out of their mind okay rich they don't have to want for nothing hanging themselves killing themselves jumping off buildings just doing crazy stuff and you're like well dang why you know why are they doing that they have this their bills is paid they don't got to worry about this that and the third well listen what does it profit a man to gain the world but lose his soul? Okay? You lose your soul when you put more into feeding your flesh, which your flesh is your mind, your will, and your emotions. And so when we're talking about flesh, we're talking about you do what you feel or you live your life according to how you feel. And you can't do that because feelings are fickle. So you can't say I'm depressed today and I feel like life is worth, not worth living and boom, I go, I go kill myself. No, because that's not the will of God for your life. The only way you can know the will of God for your life is spending time with him, getting books that will cater to your situation spiritually. Um, uh, reading your word, going on the line, searching out scriptures, taking notes um, of what God said about your situation pertaining to yourself. For no one is perfect, but we have a God who is perfect. I'm, I will never say, sit here and say I'm perfect. There are certain things that uh, other people struggle with that I don't struggle with. We all have our struggles, whether it be anger, whether it be resentment, whether it be so many different things because this world can weigh you down. But God didn't come so that we could carry the weight of the world on our shoulder. We're supposed to give it to him and we're supposed to allow the Holy Spirit to show us how we are supposed to live according to God's plan for our life and God's purpose. And in Jeremiah 29 and 11, no matter what comes against us, no matter what goes on around us, Jeremiah 29 and 11 says that. I know the thoughts and plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, plans to give you hope and a future. And that once we know that's a part of God's will, your mind, will, and emotion, say if you're sick and God says that you're healed, um, you're taking medicine or something like that because the word is medicine. People don't realize that when you feed your spirit, that word, your, your, your body has to come in line. Oh, I'm healed. Oh, I'm Okay. Let me release them, release them endorphins. I mean, that's real life. You have people walking around saying the mass and the mass and all this other stuff and all these different things. Listen, 
I have a personal relationship with God the Father through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus. Only, there's only one way to the Father, and that's through Jesus Christ. I am able to communicate with the Father, God, through Jesus Christ, because Jesus was that land that was slayed for the sins that I committed and the sins that God already knew I was going to commit when I did. So therefore, there's only one God, okay, which is in, in the Holy Trinity, which is one, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, okay? They are all one. Okay, I will go into that in another video, but I'm here to encourage, I'm here to say that we need to edify and uplift each other. We are coming into some hard, crucial times, and I'm realizing that I can put out all the information about what's going on. I can put all the information out about how the, the, the government is crooked, but you know what? That's not the fruit that God desired for me to eat. He didn't desire for me to eat that fruit at all. What he wanted me to do is he wanted me to receive his spirit upon me to do the work that he's called me here to do for. And I want to apologize for my my subscribers for not uh, uploading videos in a while. I must say I was distracted. I was distracted in the hype. I was distracted. You know, even though I won't say the things that I were posting, they were true. And, you know, they, they are true. And they are the things that's going on. But God wants us to focus on the the soul. Um, the Bible says the, the the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. I don't know who's going to come across this video on YouTube, but all I want to do is, is do the work of the father. Okay. Because I had to hear a word from somebody else who was willing to do the work of the father to keep me and to make me and to mold me to who I am today. So I'm here to say, don't get distracted. Don't partake. Don't eat of that fruit. We know that there's a lot of crookedness around us, but we know that there's a God who's greater and he will expose it. Yeah, we can spend all day exposing them, exposing them. But listen, it's a spiritual battle and I, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but it's a spiritual battle. Where else can you fight? spiritually and when in your prayer closet in your prayer closet where you go quietly lord help this family member lord um you see this situation god lord my kids are struggling in school you know go to god because he said and he promised that he would give you the desires of your heart that is a promise and the bible says god is not a man that he should lie i'm here to tell you that god is not a man that he should lie no matter what we go through in life and we will come across some hard times but just like peter had to walk on the water and he said peter focus on me yeah i know the, the it's waves the waves they were just crashing crashing what would you do if i'm standing here i'm sitting here and I tell you, you got to come here. You got to come to me. Um, it's, you know, walk on the water. The waves is crashing. Don't focus on that. Block that out. Focus on me. That's what God is telling us to do. I know all that's going on. I know there's a lot of uh, bad things happening. I know there's motor murders taking place. I know people's homes are getting robbed. I know about home invasions. I know about the movies coming out, talking about martial law and movies like The Purge and different things like that. But if we allow those things to seep into our spirit, we will not make it. And I don't know about you, but I have seven children and a husband dependent on me spiritually. Okay? I am called to be here spirit, uh, uh, for my for my family. I'm called to build them up and pray for my children, pray for my husband, and be here so that our house can be covered. So therefore, okay, if we're looking to our right and to our left, instead of paying attention to who and what is in front of us, we will sink. The rest of the world is sinking. They're drowning in all the negativity. They're drowning in a uh, 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 worry and cares about tomorrow and that's not what god wants for us so i'm here to say that i'm back um do expect more videos from me um i hope you you guys are blessed um uh if you need if you have a prayer, prayer request listen we can go to god together i'm no better than you you know what i'm saying none of us are better than each other we are called to be one nation under god we're all called to be one which means we are to be the body of christ if anybody has a prayer request we can pray together because the bible says we're two or more agree um don't you know don't don't feel bad or 
feel like, you know, I don't know how to go to God. No, all you have to do is repent, ask him to come into your life. Jesus, forgive me. I believe that uh, you died on a cross for me. Uh, you know, all that good stuff. The sinner's prayer. Say it. Believe it. Receive it. And, and walk in the prosperity of being whole in Christ. Okay? Until then, you guys have a blessed day.